Regularly scheduled programs will not be seen at this time so that we may bring you live coverage of the playoff round in the U.S. Open Golf Championship. In 1967, Jack Nicklaus won his second United States Open Championship. This putt on the final hole at the Baldus Royal Country Club established a record score of 275. Jack retained sole possession of the record for a mere 12 months. One year later, a relatively obscure and unknown golfer named Lee Trevino not only won the United States Open Championship, contested at the Oak Hill Country Club in Rochester, but he also tied Nicholas's record score of 275. Today, Jack Nicholas, who may be the greatest golfer who ever played the game, and Lee Trevino, who may be golf's most colorful and engaging personality, meet in a playoff for the United States Open title at the classic Marion Golf Club. From the Marion Golf Club in Ardmore, Pennsylvania. It's the playoff round of the 71st Annual United States Open Golf Championship. This is another ABC Sports exclusive. Through 11 holes of the 18-hole playoff, Lee Trevino leads Jack Nicklaus by one stroke. Following a 22-minute delay because of an electrical storm here in the suburbs of Philadelphia, they are on the course and going after the $30,000 first prize. Great deal of rivalry between Jack Nicklaus and Lee Trevino. They both consider the other the finest in the world. So they're out there trying to prove uh, that one of the two is. Here in Philadelphia, this is the third straight open playoff. In 1939, this gentleman was involved in a 36-hole playoff of the late Craig Wood, and Byron won out to win the title. Then, of course, right here at Marion in 1950, Ben Hogan had to down uh, George Fazio and Lloyd Mangrum in order to win his title. It's the 27th in the 71-year history of the Open Byron, and uh, you know how Nicholas and Trevino feel. Yes, I certainly do, Chris, and I tell you, it's a great feeling to know that you've tied for the Open because at least you have that record, but to try to keep yourself up, to try to not get too keyed up and stuff for the uh, last round, for the playoff round, is a very difficult thing. And it, whenever you go out to play in a playoff round, as the boys are doing today, you play kind of half match and half medal. You kind of try to do what to uh, help uh, play against what the other man does, but you're still playing against par and still against the golf course yourself. So it's kind of half match and half medal play. Speaking of great players between us, Byron, and behind us, we have uh, Mr. Jack Nicholas, who has won seven of 11 playoffs in the past, including three of the four major championships. Last year's uh, British amateur, he uh, did it for his first open victory and also for a Masters win. So here he is on the 405 yard, par four, 12th hole after birding 11 to pull within one shot, having trailed by two over Trevena. This hole is a 405 yard hole uphill. Jack is driven nicely in the fairway and he'll have probably about a nice eight iron or maybe just a nine iron to this green that's slightly uphill. And uh, we'll see where it goes. It's a little long and to the left of the flag slightly, but uh, this rain will slow the greens down a little bit and give the boys a little better chance to roll the ball a little more firmly on the green. Thus far, Jack has had three birdies and a double bogey while Lee Trevino who is at even par through 11 holes, uh, has had a birdie and one bogey. There's Lee. He uh, very often will wear the bright red shirts as he did yesterday, and today he's uh, very puritanical and white and uh, standing alongside, that is the president of the United States Golf Association, a native of the Philadelphia area, Mr. Phil Strubing. Lee is quite straight, Chris, and you see he's in the ideal place here. He's on the edge of the fairway. It's the really the shorter way of the hole. I'm sure Lee is going with just a good sort of a pitch shot, about the same as what Jack had. Complete different style of play by these two players, but uh, I hear people say, look out, look out. So uh, it's nice on the green, though. Trevino has never been involved in an 18-hole playoff. He's been involved in four. He won two and lost two in sudden death. Now, they have some tremendous holes facing them for this championship. Here's more details. Here's the 13th hole, the shortest of the par threes at 129 yards, Byron. 
Yes, this little hole, you see the teeing area there. To, not much problem on this hole. All you have to do is miss all those bunkers, but it's a complete round green, and you see how they've played the hole during the tournament. It's a very round, a kind of a saucer-shaped green. Then we come to the 14th, the tee here. The tree is all along the left-hand side, as well as an out-of-bounds. Now, this can cause a lot of problems. That is the ideal driving place. Deep rough on the left. A lot of bunkers all the way up, as you can see. Bunkers left and right all the way around this hole, and the pin cut in the back right-hand side to green that's somewhat blind. Now the, now the 15th, Chris, is... Uh, as you see, and this out-of-bounds continues, goes along the left, and uh, the ideal driving place is here. A little high fade, bunkers on the right, probably a three-wood off the tee for Jack today. Bunkers around the green, and the green with a big yawning bunker in front of the green to the right. And here's the 16th, 430 yards, par four. You'll hear Henry Longhurst do commentary in this hole in a bit, but right now, Byron. Well, you see where the pointer's going there. It was pointing first at the ideal driving place. Now then, this is the quarry that you've read and heard so much about. It's a deep thing. As you see how they've played the whole this grass, a long rough all the way around this green. Then the 17th, a magnificent par three, 224 yards, probably the most difficult hole to far to par on the entire golf course. This area down here is just no man's area, is where you do absolutely have to stay away from. The pin is cut just about in the center of the green. Then the finest for a finishing hole, the 18th, 458 yards, par four. And this is where uh, things happened yesterday and perhaps again today. Yes, you see the pointer there. That's the ideal driving place. You drive out of a slot. You can hardly see the fairway. Then these bunkers that guard the fairway up and down, and then this green that slopes up to the center and then from the middle of the green to the back uh, is a very, very difficult putt. Now then you see Jack getting ready to putt at the 12th hole. 12th hole, a par four. And uh, if he can make this putt, it would, he would pull even. Chris, I think this is the whole lot of people, our spectators, I hope, saw Jack play the marvelous shot out of the bunker the, underneath the tree when he drove in the bunker to the left on this hole yesterday. That one of the shots that kept Jack in the tournament, kept him going so he could get into a tie with Trevino. They started out today. Jack uh, parred the first hole, and Trevino uh, bogeyed it. This putt should, it will not be quite as fast, but they're still fast, even with a march on the green. This will break considerably to his right. Still can't hit the ball. You just have to roll it smoothly and blow on it gently. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. I'm telling you, Chris, yeah, you can't go as close and not go in. Almost like 18 yesterday where he could have won it outright. Jack Nicholas at the 12th hole. This is for a par four in the playoff. Live color covers coming from the Marion Golf Club. Let's look at the putt again. Boy, you know, Chris, it reminds me of the putt that Jack hit last year in Dallas that the last hole when he and Arnie tied the putt, there's just no way that the ball is going to not go in the hole. But now you watch as it goes by, it just goes right across, just to, well, across the very lip of the hole. And now, Lee Trevino in a similar position, reaching the green in two on this par four hole. Remember at this moment, he leads by a stroke. He is even par in the round. Nicholas is one over. At one time, Nicholas was three over. He has somewhat the same line nearly that Jack did, so he should learn a little bit from Jack's, but he still has a difficult putt to try to make. And there it as you saw it. Two shot lead, Lee Trevino. Second birdie for Trevino in his round. This one coming at the 12th hole. He birdied eight, so to be fair, let's see that putt again. Well, and watch how nicely he stroked his smooth. Here it goes, and he, as I said, he might have learned a little bit from the break that Jack did, and you saw it just disappear like a rat. He's unbelievable. Yes, he really is. He's really a cool cat, this guy. He, he's uh, loose out there all the time. He plays hard and concentrates great. Really has a great attitude, a marvelous attitude for the game. Two fellow Texans, Ben Hogan and Byron Nelson, predicted way back that he was a great player, and they're, uh, they're right. Let's go to Bill Fleming now. All right, in the 13th hole is the little hole, the 129-yard hole, and there you see it from the back of the green looking toward the tee. And I think you can get an idea of the gallery, despite the thunderstorm that we had earlier and the threat of another one, this gallery has not diminished a bit. It was warm and humid, about 95 degrees, 
and it did cool things off a little bit. Sometimes it's good to kind of listen to what Lee says around the teeing area. There's the gallery looking back at historic, the clubhouse there in the back, historic Marion, the colorful tents. And look at that, as you saw there, the sand that faces the golfers. That's really the problem here on the smallest green on the golf course, to get over the front bunker. The pin placement today is in a rather good spot. It's some uh, 35 feet back from the front edge, so there's plenty to work with, and it's back on the left. Lee used a nine iron here the past four rounds and has parred this hole all four previous rounds. But you know, despite the, the crackling tension around the first tee today, they flipped the coin, Phil Strubing of the USGA flipped the coin, and it was the toss was called by Jack Nicklaus, so he got the honor. And everything was kind of quiet, and all of a sudden, Lee reached into his golf bag and threw a fake snake at Jack. Needless to say, it broke all of the tension. Just a nice, easy nine iron or a wedge. It up it comes, and look at the backspin. Not more than seven feet from the cup on the 13th hole. Another chance for a birdie. He already has a two-stroke lead. Remember, this is metal play. It is not hole by hole. Jack's main trouble today has been in bunker play. In the first three holes, he had four shots in the bunkers. He put it in on two, left it in on his second shot, and put it in on three and also left it in. And more sand faces him here. on it. And he's inside Trevino as the ball spins back not more than four or five feet from the cup. ABC Sports and the USGA combine to bring you the finest in golf. We'll return to the Marion Golf Club in one moment. Lee Trevino will putt first here on the 13th, holding a two-stroke lead over Jack Nicklaus in this 18-hole playoff for the 71st USGA Open Championship. 21 years ago, Ben Hogan defeated Lloyd Mangrum and George Fazio. Ben Hogan shooting a 69, Mangrum a 73, and Fazio a 75. And George Fazio has been a very interested spectator during this 1971 Open. This putt about an eight footer. Lee just coming off a birdie at 12. This is for a birdie at 13. So he taps it in, or will tap it in for the par, and it gives Jack Nicholas a slight opening to pick up a stroke on Trevino. It's interesting here that these two men in the Open Championship playoff are running 1-2 in money for 1971. Jack has won 146,000, Lee 135. This is how they've played the hole so far, and they also are 1-2 in Ryder Cup points. And they're now in a death struggle for this championship. Nicholas trails by two strokes. He can cut it to one if it goes in. Took a 
360 degree turn around the cup and came out. He'll never have a better chance to pick up some ground. He still is two strokes behind Trevino and he must be shaking his head. Let's watch it again. I can't believe it either. Around the night. Bill. <clears throat> yes, Byron. Well, you know what happens on something like that is this ball was breaking away from the hole. Now, if it had been on the upper side of the hole or the ball breaking into the hole, it would have dove right into the hole. But when it breaks onto, breaks onto the low side, then that gives a little momentum and makes it swing around from the hole instead of going in. All right, on this first day of summer, let's go to number 14 now, and Bud Palmer and Dave Marr. Well, thank you very much, Bill Fleming. It certainly is the first day of summer, and here's the pin placement on the 14th, and Dave, it, it looks fairly easy today. Well, but they put the pins in uh, high places today because of the forecast of rain, and it so happens on this green, and it is uh, in a you know opening there where if a player drives it in a rough, he could possibly run the ball on the green. It's easiest I've seen it for the five days. Well, it's about uh, 20 feet from that side there, the closest side, and Bob Howes, as vice president of the USGA, is always thinking on about the thunderstorms that might occur, which they certainly did occur here. We had a 22-minute uh, delay. This is a 414-yard par four, and believe it or not, in the three opens that have been played here, it's proved to be the third most difficult hole. It's a dog leg left. You can't see the tee. You've got traps out there. And the out of bounds is only 23 yards on the left hand side. There it is with the road. You can see the guy jogging up there. And the crowd pouring down as the two players come to the tee. And uh, you played this twice, Dave. Uh, how did it play? Where's the best place to be? Here's the model. Well, of course, where the flag is today, just in the right center of the green, let's say, uh, it, it's best, I would say, either in the, just the left side of the fairway or the middle. You don't want to get too far right here. You probably see Nicholas hit a, well, you've got to avoid the rough that you see there on your left. That, that would be perfect, right where the pointer is. And uh, I'm sure you'll see Jack probably hit, it looks like Lee might even be hitting a three wood here. He's not using a tee, and uh, it's probably just going to take a three wood and cut the ball back into the fairway. How close can you get? <laughs> yeah. Hey, how'd you do in playoffs, Dave? <laughs> Well, I was pretty well. I've just played sudden death twice and happened to win both of them. This, to me, is uh, a lot more exciting. I'm two and zero for playoffs. Not bad, fella. Here's Lee. He's had two birds and one bogey. Bogey the first hole. Now, he doesn't want to get that ball too high in the air, you know. So he's probably got a three wood and going to hit a left to right shot. Sounded like the people like it. Right, he's just just perfect right in the left center of the fairway well he's just taking it from you Dave you're 2-0 <laughs> you know, where the pointer was is where he hit the ball now Jack I'm sure will use a three wood here he did all the uh, first four rounds because uh, he doesn't want to go too far he can drive in the right hand rough which wouldn't be a very good place to be a few folks want to know how high Jack Nicholas tees the ball there you are As I said, but he's probably going to use a three wood, and it looks like he's got a driver out. So there's your expertise. It's been a good hole for Jack. He's picked up in the four rounds. He's had two birdies and two pars. Lee has had three pars and one birdie. That was yesterday. Really counted. Jack trailing by two. <coughs> And he, too, is in the fairway here on the 414-yard par 414. You know, rarely does one see Chris Senkel with such an impressive golf trophy. But on this occasion, Chris talks with last year's U.S. Open champion, British Tony Jacklin, about a very important matter. One of the most coveted prizes in golf is this United States Open trophy. And to have your name inscribed on it as an Open champion is truly a thrill and an honor. The last name on it is the name of the gentleman to my right, Tony Jacklin. And I know, Tony, uh, it's a thrill for you to know that your name will be a lasting memory in the history of American golf. Well, it is a great thrill, Chris, and it's a great honor as well. And I just hope that, that nev the name never rubs off there. No way it'll <laughs> ever come off. We'll see to that. Good. 
Well, Tony, I know that your two subsequent victories in the Open Championships have made you a hero not only here, but on the other side of the Atlantic as well. Well, thank you, Chris. And let me tell you about one of my heroes, General Dwight D. Eisenhower, who was so popular in Great Britain. He was an avid golfer, and during his years as President of the United States, he often sought relaxation on the golf course. But in the later years of his life, the general devoted much of his time and energy toward two projects in which he was vitally interested. Eisenhower College in Seneca Falls, New York, and the Eisenhower Medical Center in Palm Desert, California. And this year, we in the golf world have organized golf's tribute to Ike to create greater public interest and support for these two projects which the general was so fond of. And for those of you at home who would like to help golf's tribute to Ike and its efforts to raise funds for the Eisenhower College and the Eisenhower Medical Center, you may do so either by giving at your local golf club to one of the 15,000 volunteers who are organizing to solicit contributions, or by mailing a tax-deductible check to Golf's Tribute to Ike, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. You know, a donation of $10 or as much more as you wish will entitle you to receive this handsome portrait of General Eisenhower, as well as this souvenir bag tag, which bears a likeness of the general. Tony, uh, thank you so much for stopping by and telling us more about golf's tribute to Ike. Thank you, Chris. I think, the, Dave, that's the closest that Chris Schenkel will ever get to that open trophy. <laughs> well, he's got to practice a little. He was practicing this morning with Byron, I think. Now we move out to the fairway. Jack Nicholas and Lee Trevino right here. Looks like Lee is going to hit first. This is his fifth open. His first open is in 67. Nobody knew who he was. He finished fifth. Shot 283. Nicholas won that one, by the way. Trevino made 6,000 bucks, and he won in 68. Missed the cut in 69, and was eighth in 1970. The Open that Tony Jacklin won. I'd say that's a pretty good open record. Sure is. This, what's this rain done besides soften up the greens? Much to the course, or not? Do you think? Not there? too much. It, there wasn't really that much rain, but to, to have a big effect on it, it might have just softened the greens just a little bit. You saw both those shots at 13 stop very quickly. Now you see Lee getting ready to play his second shot. He's in perfect position here to hit a left to right shot in at this flag. What do you think he's using? Oh, probably from there, five or six iron. That's too much. He heard him say, that's too much. Let's see if he's right or wrong. He is right. It goes over the green, directly below the tower. And he knew it as soon as he hit it. You could hear Lee say, that's too much. Well, reason being, you can see where the people are, and that's Mac England, the forward observer. But the reason that uh, the ball might have jumped a little bit on him was because of the wet weather. It tends, when the grass gets a little wet, for it to squirt as you hit it, or hit a flyer, as we say. And now Jack's getting ready to play his second, bud. He's probably got about an eight iron or seven iron. He was about 20 yards in front of Lee there. Very deliberate player. That's what Arnold says. <laughs> Can't tell whether he likes it or not. And he's a little bit long too, bud. He sure is. About 30, 35 feet, wouldn't you say? Yeah, he's, uh, but he's got to be aggressive because he's two shots back. And uh, just like you saw at the last hole, when the ball starts coming back at you, you figure maybe it's not your day. Jack, uh, I mean, Dave, Jack really pounds a tee shot. Analyze this one, will you? Well, as you can see there, he's in, he's in very good position. Now, you'll notice that as Jack starts away, he sort of cocks his head a little bit to the left, moves the club away, breaking ever so slightly all the way. It looks like it's one piece, taking his club back inside, hands very high, left heel, weight on the inside of the right foot. Now, as he starts down, his left heel goes to the ground. He moves laterally through, turning out of the way, at impact into a nice high finish. Just a great swing. Beautiful balance. See how full and wide his, his arc was going through the ball. That's just, uh, I wish I could borrow that swing for about two years, but. I think so is everybody in the world. And now they're coming up to the 14th. Two players along with Phil Strubing, who's president of the USGA. By the way, this is Jack Nicholas's 14th Open. He's won it twice, he's been second twice, third once, and fourth once. 
That's remarkable that you think, you know, 14 opens, he's only 31 years old. He got, got a little bit of a head start on some guys, but. And here are the winnings, Jack Nicholas and Lee Trevino. And, of course, first prize is $30,000 here. So whoever uh, wins will be the decided leading money winner. Uh, second prize is 15000 And now we're going back to Lee Trevino's ball, the asking the marshals are, who've done beautiful work here, talking to Phil Struving. Maybe they want that barricade removed a little bit. Well, what they're talking about there, Bud, he's right under our tower, right? I can see the ball. There's a rope there, a gallery rope, and he might be a little bit close to our tower. There's a snow fence here that uh, is around the bottom, and we'll see whether it interferes with his stance or swing, in which case he would get to move to where it would not interfere and no penalty involved in that. We'll have to be very quiet because, actually, if we dropped a golf ball out of the tower, it almost hit Jack right on the head. Uh, uh, as you know, we've had, uh, there's all sorts of thunderstorm warnings uh, last night, and everybody turned out today. It poured rain. Everybody scattered like a big flock of quail, but by gosh, when they started playing again, everybody came pouring back once again. He's taking a couple practice swings there, bud, while Phil is uh, watching him to see if it does interfere with his, his swing. And He's not sure whether it does or not. You can see him grinning and walking out there. Still, he's making a few remarks. As uh, Bill Fleming said, he brought out that big fake snake and threw it at uh, Jack when Jack won the flip to see his honor it was. Lee's playoff record, by the way, he's won two and lost two. In 70, he won at Tucson in the first extra hole. He won the National Airlines Open. He lost to Kaiser in a three-way playoff. Got a sand iron, bud. That's got to stop, though. Look at how slick these greens are, even after the rain. And he's left himself, what, 12 to 14 feet, I'd say, coming back for his par here. That's about right. Of course, you know, with a two shot lead, he can, uh, you know, he's got to be sure to get the ball on the green out of there, but he can't fluff it, you know, like Jack did the first uh, on two and three when he left it in the trap each time. That's amazing. Jack's had an interesting round. He's had three birds, two bogeys, and one double bogey. Lee has had two birds and one bogey. Lee was even for the first nine. Jack was one over. And Jack has to, you now you can see that undulation. He has to go down to this putt, this putt, and then up, and then downhill again with a right to left break, I'd say. It's almost impossible putt to make. And of course, there you see how they've played the hole and the four rounds of the tournament. Of course, Lee's birdie yesterday was uh, at the most opportune time. But you can see Jack's ball there, how he has to putt through a little swale. Downhill, then back uphill, and downhill again. He cannot afford to hit it too hard because he's got Lee about 12 or 14 feet away. This is about 30 to 35 feet. This is quite a pivotal hole yesterday. Lee Trevino birdied the hole, as Dave said, to go one under for the tournament and take the lead with a 12-foot putt. And Jack Nicholas too putted for his par to stay even. And third round leader Jim Simons got into the rough and bogey to go one over, a stroke which he never recovered. By the way, I'd like to congratulate uh, the amateur Jim Simons, a 21-year-old who led going into the final round, shot 76, but he certainly did not fold. 17, he just missed a putt to go in a tie with Nicholas and Palmer. And as a good competitor should, on the 18th, uh, Jim Simons went for broke for a birdie to tie it up, but he took a double bogey. Rather, he, it was Nicholas and Trevino that he'd go in the playoff with. Not Arnold. I'm sure Arnold's watching this one now. Jack for the birdie. But it's a long, tough putt. And he is strong. Beautiful putt, though, but real good putt. He's left himself one. You know, you don't want to leave it short of the hole and still be putting downhill on your second try. It's just a little bit too firm.
Lee Trevino here. Leading Jack Nicholas by two. Needs his putt or his par. A little picture of Jack there on the left. Uh, he's watching very closely. Should break a little left to right, but. Oh, what a great putt by Lee Trevino. That was a very large putt to make there. As you can see, he's. Uh, <laughs> Well, he just kissed it. He put it in his mouth yesterday yeah. after he sank it here for the birdie. Now, Jack Nicholas, did you hear about young Jack, who's nine years old, uh, broke 50 for the first time and came into his mother, Barbara, and said, well, Mom, just shows you that all those years of practice finally paid off. <laughs> nine years old. He's got almost the same line as Lee had, but he's just got to start it inside the left of the hole, almost straight, and just hit it solid. Right in the middle of the cup. But Jack Nicholas still trails by two as they go to the 15th hole. And now let's go to the gentleman covering the 15th, the Adonis Frank Gifford. Thank you, bud. And here is the 15th, 378 yards, not long in distance, but many hazards. Out of bounds on the left. Here's the tee shot. And you must hit a good tee shot here at 15. The ideal placement would be to cut that first bunker. And this would, you see, bunkers flanking the fairway all along the right side. And the pin tucked in behind the bunker on the right, where the golfer hitting a good tee shot would play something between a eight or nine or possibly even a wedge. And here it is from behind the green. That's the bunker in front of the green that the golfers will have to flirt with to get near the pin. Bunkers on the left. Well trapped. The big problem here, of course, the out of bounds on the left, the deep rough on the right. That far bunker you see is the one the golfers must cut just over the top for pin placement. Lee Trevino, just as loose as they come. One of the most amazing things I've ever seen in sports is what happened on the first tee here at Marion today when Lee Trevino, and you could hear the electricity crackling in the crowd. He reached in that bag and pulled out that snake and broke the entire house up. A great player, cool Lee Trevino. And Trevino has put the ball in good position. A little right of probably where he would like to be. He will have to come over the bunker to the pin for his second shot. And he'll have about 28 feet between the pin and the bunker guarding the green here at 15. Now Jack Nicholas. Two shots down, four holes to go. Also on the right side, just about dead even with Lee Trevino. ABC Sports continues to bring you the finest in professional golf, and with a slight pause in the action here at the Marion Golf Club, we'll take this opportunity to bring you an important message. Here's how it stands through 14 holes at the Marion Golf Club in the playoff round of the U.S. Open. And Byron. Lee Trevino doesn't have the classical swing of Jack Nicklaus. Take a look at this one. Well, he has a marvelous swing. It's just a different style than Jack. And no, Lee is much shorter, so naturally he has what we call a swing. 
that's a little flatter. It comes around a little bit more than just comes up. You notice now his left side, he moves away with his arms before his left Usual for a good player to do this, but his shoulders rotate more than staying under. And now in this position, notice how he drops because he is leading so strongly into his left side, keeping the face of the club open. See how his head really stays down in both arms, very straight through the hitting area into the shot. And that's why he drives the ball down the ferry so beautifully and with a little fade. And he has outdriven Jack Nicklaus. This is Jack Nicklaus's second shot. He'll have to come directly over a bunker from about 145 yards out. And he is dead on line. Absolutely a sensational shot for Jack Nicholas. About eight feet from the pen here at 15. Byron, I would imagine the rain that we had earlier has slowed these greens down somewhat. That ball stopped right dead there. Yes, especially, uh, Frank, with uh, just enough moisture now to the green to hold the pitches well, but still will putt quite fast. Lee Trevino now with a two-shot lead. And he is off a little to the right. And his ball bites, bends back. Lee Trevino will have about 22 feet. The jolly one from El Paso, Texas. Of course, looking for his second U.S. Open, Jack Nicklaus, his third. Both of them. Frank. Oh, the U.S. Open record. Yes, Byron. I would think that Lee would probably try and, of course, he would like to have had that shot closer to the hole, but he wanted to be sure he didn't get too far above the hole to, and just let Jack make his own three if he could. He wanted to stay below the hole. Of course, he would have much prefer to get a little closer than that, but it was not too bad. Nicholas has played 15 and even par throughout the tournament. And both of them, of course, get that rousing ovation as they approach the green. Lee Trevino has had one birdie here on Friday. Yesterday, both of them had clutch five footers. And here are the qualifiers who will move into the 1972 U.S. Open. Because, of course, they finish in the top 15. Jack Nicklaus and Lee Trevino, of course. Jim Colbert, Bob Rossford, John Miller, George Archer, Jim Simons, the... Brilliant amateur from Butler, Pennsylvania, Ray Floyd, Gay Brewer, Bert Yancey, Larry Henson, Bobby Nichols, Lanny Watkins, the other fine amateur. Jerry Hurd, and those were the ties at 15. Also, Frank, I'm Frank. Yes, sir. I might add that the ones just behind them with the six with the low 16 would be the ones who will also be qualified to play in the Masters in 1972. Lee Trevino. And he will have a putt of about 22 feet, I would imagine. We mentioned that Jack Nicklaus is looking for his third U.S. Open championship. Ben Hogan, of course, won the Open four times. Bobby Jones, four times. Willie Anderson, four times. Lee Trevino from about 22 feet with a two-shot lead. And he has put it in again. Lee Trevino is really hot today and he's loose and let's look at that putt again Question all the way for Lee Trevino. Now Jack Nicholas studying his putt. This from about eight feet. And Byron, what does that do to you when you're two down? Well, Frank, right at this point, Jack must, he knows, of course, that what kind of a competitor Lee is. 
so he feels at this point that he must get this in almost because you can't give Lee Trevino very many strokes. Study and concentration, Jack you, Nicholas. I will say one thing, Frank, that uh, Jack will not be ruffled. He will give it his best, and that is awfully good. He'll take his time, as he always does, and he will not hit it till he gets ready. And uh, if it doesn't go in, why, he'll give it the best try of anybody you ever saw in your life. Certainly, he proved that he does not ruffle, and he's proved it for many years. But yesterday, a great display of golf in these final five holes to move into a tie with Trevino. Its pin is placed almost in the location where it was yesterday, perhaps 10 feet towards the back of the green. And yesterday we watched many putts with just a slight curl to the left. You can tell Frank by his actions that he knows he must make this putt. Jack Nicholas now in danger of going three down to Lee Trevino. Pressure cut by Jack Nicholas. And he will not crack. He did it yesterday. He's done it again. Under the gun. Right in the heart. Jack Nicholas remaining two down to Lee Trevino as we go now to 16 Henry Longhurst. And there's the model of the 16 hole as they walk across to the tee. 430 yards, par four. That's where we start, and we go downhill to that position there. Even Nicholas can generally take a driver. But although it sounds rather obvious, this is one hole where you absolutely must be straight, because if you get in the rough on the left there, you cannot get over those trees and the quarry, and you can't get over those trees if you go on the right. There's the quarry, about 100 yards of it, perhaps less, and the flag up on the top of the two tiers on this green. Magnificent par four hole, and that's as we look back. Up to the tee, far side, just off the picture on the right. We may just be able to see the players there. You can see how downhill the drive is. Then through the narrow gap between the trees and uphill and up to the higher tier of the two terraces on this green. Tremendously thrilling match, this. I know it isn't a match, really, but, but of course it is. It's Nicholas V. Trevino. We you know the 16th. Judy. Go ahead. Judy. Judy. I think we're happy with that one. Anyone on the fairway will do, and there it is. So he's admirably set up now to go over the quarry and up the hill onto the top level of the green. That's Lee Trevino, 16th, leading by two. Three par figures for a 68. Nicholas, three pars for a 70. Wonderful golf here. Jack Nicholas, the 16th, two behind, three to play. seconds, pitches down, just in the shallow rough, but uh, that won't matter, and it's above ground. Now, ABC Sports continues with its exclusive color coverage of this prestigious U.S. Open Golf Championship, following this message.
And now we pick them up again, Lee Trevino, two ahead with three to play. This is the 16th, and they're going to play their second shots over this quarry in a moment. On our left, Lee Trevino. You'll see on the right, just in the semi-rough, uh, is Nicholas. We see him second. It's, uh, I think, I'm pretty sure, Trevino to play first. Now, he's on a fairway, but he's still a bit too much to the right, and is balked by these big trees. They've probably all grown up very quietly uh, without people noticing them since the course was built in 1912. Lee Trevino, the 16th, two ahead. Now he's got to get up onto the second level of the green. And he's done it absolutely magnificently. I know since the exhibition of this, peppering these flags at this supreme moment. And there's one from, make it 10 feet, certainly no more. This is a real heavyweight contest. The two leading players of the year in points and in money. Now, Nicholas, to reply to that one. Perfect drive right down by the quarry. Probably an eight iron or so. <coughs> That's the shortest shot he could have left himself, and he replies with another body blow. Straight back, you give me one, I'll give you one back. Look at those. That's uh, 10 and 15 feet. 10 for Trevino, 15. To Jack Nicholas. And there's a nice place to watch the US Open Championship from and a nice day in which to do it. The uh, sun coming out now and no chance I think of any more of the rain which held it up for 22 minutes earlier on. And they march along through the quarry there. About 80 yards of it, brush and scrub and gorse and broom. And Lee Trevino striding ahead as usual. Henry? Henry? Yes. Yes, they're, Byron. They're certainly not giving each other any quarters, are they? Well, this is like, as I've said, two real heavyweights uh, fighting a real fair fight and hammering it out blow for blow. I must say, if I may intrude a personal note, I thought, and all still think that these playoffs are often a great nuisance to a lot of people. But I must say that having watched the concluding stages of this one, I'm very glad to have been here. Yes, about 15 feet for Nicholas, and now the position is reversed from the last hole. He's got the longer one, and if he could get it in, as Trevino did on the last green, he put the most tremendous pressure on. And here, how they've played this hole so far. Trevino with one birdie, all the rest pars. Yesterday we saw almost everybody play it, 60 players, and there were four birdies. Henry? Yes, Baron. From a player's standpoint, here I think is what might be going through Nicholas's mind. Trevino, putting and playing the way he is and inside of Jack, Jack might say, well, I really must get this one in, or Trevino might make that one, and I would be three behind and two to go, whereas if I could make it, then I'd put the pressure and I might be only one behind. I think that would be his thoughts at this moment. Well, I'm sure that's fair psychology. But perhaps all he's thinking about is to get it in. They've got to play, I'm sure, Byron would agree now, single shot by shot, not hole by hole. Absolutely true at this point. I think we've been studying this putt from up here for a time. And I'm being uncharitable in saying it's 15. I think it's 
between 15 and 18. Downhill. No good taking a charge at it. <clears throat> So now the 16th green, the 71st US Open, the playoff, Nicholas two behind Trevino with three to play. This for a birdie three. Magnificent try. Right to the last moment. This is putting on a very high level. If you were with us yesterday, you'll remember that he held three tremendous putts running. 15, 16, 17. Yes. And he couldn't be nearer than that. And now here's one from 10 or 11 feet for Trevino. Two ahead at the moment. Can't fail to get down in two more. Must remain two ahead. And it's this to go three ahead with two to play for Trevino. This for a birdie three to go three ahead. Now that was pushed out right from the start. You can always see on television better than with the naked eye. And there was never any chance of that not going to the right. <clears throat> so they halve the hole with a par four, each with a chance for a three. Nicholas is the better try from a greater distance. Position unchanged as they leave the 16th, and that's Lee Trevino, two ahead with two to play. Now we go to Bill Fleming. Thank you, Henry. And the quarry that was so significant on the 16th also comes into play on the 17th hole. There is the teeing area through the quarry, and again, the wilderness and jungle that is between the tee and the green. There's no fairway at all, as you can see, although they do cut it back for the members somewhat. Six traps surrounding a rather large green, double tiered. The idea here with the pin placement today in the upper left-hand corner as the golfer views it is to get it up on the tier. And there you see the wicker basket on top of the flag stick. Normally a flag on top of it, but this is the only club in the United States, to our knowledge, that today has the wicker basket. This is a throwback to the old Scottish shepherd who put his lunch basket on top of his crook. And when Hugh Wilson, the amateur architect, who designed Marion, went to Britain to study the courses there, he brought that back. Winged Foot had it for a short time, and now Marion is the only club that has it. You can't get any idea of where the wind is blowing by looking at a whisker basket. Here's the shot by Trevino. Easy. God. Uh oh, I think he thought it hit it a little long. Oh. Oh. It's short. Short and short of the trap, which is fortunate. And short of the long grass, he's just off the fringe. There it is. You can just barely make out the top of the ball, but he, he will have a, a shot at it. However, he will have a rather snaky double break to come over. Now Jack Nicholas, and the pressure is certainly on him. Jack, who faltered a bit on the second and third holes with a bogey and double bogey, finds himself even par, but two strokes behind Trevino, which of course is important. The only thing is a many importance right now as a matter of fact is to get that one stroke back here if he can and hope that uh, Trevino will falter and hope that he can make the swing of two again metal play not match play 
total strokes. If they should tie at the end of 18, they would go right back to the first hole and continue in play to sudden death, and we have coverage of it, fortunately for you. So a big shot here on the 224-yard giant of a par three. in the bunker. It's in the bunker and it's buried. And that is where Jack does not want to be because of his rather unfortunate bunker play in the first two holes where the white faces of Marion so-called sand traps here rose up like a specter to haunt him and may still through his dreams. We'll return to the Marion Golf Club following this important message. Humanity in every conceivable place here at Marion. This golf course laid out on only 126 acres, and now the golfers coming through. If you let your imagination wander a bit as they wander up here, you could almost hear the drums of a safari as they wind their way through the jungle. Lee with a bit of a smile. I'll say this for Jack, too. He has a great sense of humor. After Lee had taken out the fake snake and thrown it around, and uh, made light of, of the match at the first hole. Jack was obviously a little tense, but he came up and said to Lee, look, we have two minutes before we tee off. Would you like to go first? I'm known as a rather slow player. Then we can finish on time. And now Jack looking over what will be probably one of the most important bunker shots he's ever played. Trevino is not on the putting service, but he is on the fringe of the green. And now Nicholas, facing here uh, quite a problem as this young man looks down from one of the trees from above. On the second hole, Jack was in the bunker and failed to get out on his first attempt. On the third hole, he did the same thing. He had taken just simply too much. Trevino has had 16 birdies in this championship. Nicholas has had 13. Jack's double bogey on the third hole today spelled his doom because that's where Lee Trevino took over the lead and he has not relinquished it. He still holds two strokes with two holes to play. A lot of green to work with, but he has to come over a little ridge. some shot. That ball was down so deep, very few people without the strength of a necklace could have gotten it out of there and put it six feet from the cup. Let's just uh, roll back the calendar a couple of hours in time and take a look at his earlier bunker shot on the second hole. This was in the stifling heat of the early afternoon. This is on the second hole earlier this afternoon and you can see the ball fly up and land again right in the bunker. The second hole is a long par five and he wound up with a bogey six. Now back live on the 17th for the second shot of Lee Trevino who won the Open Championship at Oak Hill in Rochester when Nicholas finished second. He's ahead right now and Nicholas looks like he's going to finish second. However, a lot of golf yet in these one hole and a bit to play. A little bit strong, hit it high, bends it down, coming in the back. It's all right. You look for a moment as it might be just a little bit over that ridge. 
but the rain softened things up just enough to slow the ball down, put the brakes on, and now Lee has less than a three-footer for his par. I think it's safe to say that if Jack misses this one, it'll be hard to recover to win the championship that he so desperately wants for his 12th major title. This is the way it is right now. Trevino with a two-stroke lead. He took the lead on the third hole of this 18-hole playoff and has held it ever since. This putt about six feet with a left to right break. Both caddies very anxious for their competitors to win. Both pick their golfers by lot. You can hear the inner urban of the Penn and Western Railroad. There is Pete Burton, the caddy of Jack Nicholas, 25 year old student at Villanova. And there is Tom Tadio, 21 years old, a student at St. Joseph College, both seniors. Bill. Go ahead, Byron. You know, it's one thing, whether Jack makes the putt or not, I want you to watch how still he keeps his body in, what a firm position he has his body in on this putt. He, it looks like you could run him with a tank almost not moving when he really gets locked in in the position that he uses, and that's why he is normally so wonderful on these length putts. Yesterday, as he made some of those great putts toward the finish of the round, he was so still, you couldn't see anything move except just the putter in his hands and arms. Only the mechanical sounds of the train and nature sound here. This is for the three. form but more importantly if Lee Trevino makes his putt he would go three strokes up with one hole to go and it would be safe to say perhaps that the open championship will be decided right here and now although the 18th hole is formidable indeed it is the toughest hole on the golf course 21 years ago Ben Hogan rolled in a 50 footer to win the championship in a playoff with Mangrum and Fazio and this man here Jack Nicholas, has bogeyed the hole and his hopes are fading. Current PGA champion, remember, wanted to double it with the Open win. Even though he failed at the Masters, there is still the British Open to come. But it looks like Lee Trevino, a dark horse certainly, in 1968, based on his fine finish in 67, was one of the co-favorites this year. And it's in the cup. He takes a three-stroke lead to the 18th pole. All right, Chris, it's all yours. Nice going, Bill. Lee Trevino now making the short trek to the 18th tee as we look at the whole model of this, uh, this blockbuster, 458 yards par four. There is that narrow slot off the tee to the landing area, Byron. Yes, that is some area. There's a little bit of a downslope if you go beyond where the marker is there, the pointer. You see the uh, bunkers uh, guarding the fairway and guarding the green. And we never have said much about it, but we've, there's the uh, green there. And from the front of the green, it slopes up to the center from the center back. But we never said much about it, but I've seen quite a few balls go out of bounds on the second shot here that is very close to this green along the left hand side in other words just to the left of the bunker so uh, we could see something happen here but we don't expect it to I don't care let it go over I don't want no Lee feet. Trevino at two under Jack Nicholas is one over Trevino's hit is on the right hand side of the fairway in right on the top of the hill just an ideal place to be there you see the four caddy going out, uh, giving the indication, and now you see the golf ball itself. And from the fairway, we move back toward the tee, and now from the back of the tee, through the chute, 
Here is Jack Nicholas. I'm sure you'll see one ball hit hard right here. Right in the fairway on the down slope, about 15 yards, 20 yards possibly in front of where Trevina went. This championship began in 1895. Horace Rollins won it at the Newport Golf Club. And the minute you win the Open, you join the elite group in the who's who of golf. Yes, as recently as 1968, Lee Trevino, very obscure, coming to Rochester and beating the best for his first Open championship. Young man, young Texan, born in 1939. And I'll tell you, Byron, uh, he's been working on that gum today. He hasn't had too much chance to talk. I'll tell you, he has But he's been playing golf. He played beautifully in 1939, Chris. Ooh, boy. Uh, that was the same year. Thing. I hate Ooh. to remind you this, Crow, but... Oh, boy. Mm. Now, Lee has it going at a two-under pace. The lowest uh, playoff rounds ever shot. Byron Nelson and uh, the late Craig Wood in the first 18 as they tied with 68. Here's Trevino now with his iron on the 18th fairway. He is short to the right. And from where we are, it appears that it dropped into the sand. I think that it did, Chris. Uh... He's an excellent bunker player, and uh, we had just had a motion from Bud Palmer out there that the ball might have even buried. All right. Lee Trevino at two under, Jack Nicholas one over. In other words, three strokes separating them on the final hole of this 18-hole playoff. Here is Nicholas now. Chris, you can expect Jack to throw this boy to fall hard and high and try to get as close to the hole as possible, about a four or five iron on this 458-yard hole. Longest drive on 18 we've seen during this championship. Now his second shot. Hit the ball quite high, and I'm sure that this will be. And it is. It's a beautiful looking shot. Nice and high, right in the middle of the green. <laughs> what a shot. About eight feet here on the home hole. We'll return to the Marion Golf Club following this message from our local station. And now striding like a Texas rancher, looking over prize herd of cattle, Lee Trevino. Moves and takes a look at the lie in the bunker before the 18th. The ball is not buried, and here is a two-time Open champion, Jack Nicholas, who has hit a magnificent second shot to within about eight feet of the cup. He is trailing by three, one over par on the round. Lee Trevino is two under par. Nicholas with a 37 on the front side, one over. Trevino even par at 36. Chris, you can know exactly what Lee is going to try to do. He's going to try to play the ball right out into the middle of the green. Get, he's not worried about how close he gets to the flag. Of course, he'll look toward the flag, but he'll, he's a good bunker player. He'll try to put the ball just out on the green because that would give him still two putts to win, even if Nicholas were to make his putt. What a shot. What a shot, Chris. And the friendly bandito, Lee Trevino. Hits a honey out of one out of the 126. He's giving Byron and me, throwing us a kiss. And I'll tell you, you once you play around with him, as I did in Tulsa recently, Byron, it makes you fully appreciate this young man because he has a great attitude about life and about the game of golf. And of course, looking at Jack Nicholas now, with this putt for a three. We know it's a bitterly disappointing year for him because he did want to win the Masters after copying the PGA. And now here, 
He's had to go 18 holes against a former Open champion. He did have four birdies today, but then those he bogeys. Just, he just missed too many shots. He played some great holes, but he just happened to miss some just at the wrong place. And some of those bunker shots that he had earlier where he took two to get out of, he had long bunker shots there, very difficult to, to judge. That was about an eight or nine footer straight downhill, smooth, very little break. Amazing how quiet all these people can get at once. Largest playoff gallery I've ever seen. Agreed. By inches again. So, with this putt, it's a round of 71 for Jack Nicholas, one over. Still manages the smile. This for a par four for Lee Trevino. There it is, tying Byron Nelson and the late Craig Woods playoff round at 68. A three-shot victory for Lee Trevino as the president of the USGA, Phil Strubing, looks on, gives us an opportunity to thank the executive committee, P.J. Boatwright, Frank Hannigan, Bob Summers, and here at Marion, what a job they've done. Earl Barouche, Rodney Day, Richie Valentine, Bill Kettleman. This has been some open, Byron. Oh, it's been marvelous, and I'll tell you that the golf, golf that these fellows played under these conditions today, and especially the 68 by Trevino, is one of the great rounds of golf I've ever seen. That is Bob House of Wichita congratulating the two players. Lee Trevino, and listen to these rounds. Opening round of 70 or par, 72 for the second day, 69, 69, 68. Three rounds under par the last three days, Chris, on this test of golf is just unbelievable really almost and remember that no one bettered par in 72 holes the total they finished yesterday deadlocked at 280 which is even par but Trevino came back today two under Chris a peculiar thing maybe about it was that Trevino said earlier that oh I'd love to have 280 and sit in the clubhouse and that's just exactly what he shot of course, now uh, we'll be seeing a renewal of this head-to-head -head battle, I'm sure, because Trevino is going to play in the British Open, and, of course, Jack Nicklaus is defending British Open champion. ABC will be televising the final round from Royal Birkdale. And, of course, we look forward to next year's Open at Pebble Beach out there off Monterey Bay, and that'll certainly be a supreme test, as will the following year's site, Wingfoot. These great golf courses that the United States Golf Association picked to play this championship are is really great. It's great for golf. And just to make sure that I get the opens uh, in their proper sequence, next year Pebble Beach, Oakmont in 1973, and Wingfoot in 1974. And you know, even at Wingfoot, they're doing preparations on the course right now, even though it's we're three years away. Let's go down to Bud Palmer. Thank you very much, Chris. I have Bob Howes, the Vice President of USGA. And Bob, what about this playoff? I think it's the most superb playoff we've ever had. By far, the largest gallery, and I have no idea what the number is, and most magnificent golf. Yeah, come it, on it, in it, here. It, it, Here's the President, Phil Strubing. Maybe it's, I've never seen two guys work harder in my life. And congratulations to the USGA for winning such an outstanding tournament. You, you're both soaked. You both got caught in the rain. You're dripping wet, perspiring, and also from that rainstorm. Phil, what do you think about the playoff? Well, I thought it was wonderful. There were some spectacular shots. Jack Nicklaus got off to a slow start, and you don't uh, give Lee Trevino a head start and catch him very easily, and Jack never could. Uh, that was a difficult decision on Lightning because you want to keep play going, but you don't want to take the risk of anybody's life. And uh, um, worked out all right, fortunately. Well, you two have certainly worked very hard today. Any comments about, uh, shall we say, the quicksands of Marion caught Jack Nicholas or not with those trap shots? And he left two in the trap. That was very unusual, I thought. It was very unusual. He just came up off the ball twice, which uh, I do, but I don't think he should. Bill, were there many comments from the players back and forth? Was Lee fairly quiet or, or what today? He was quiet in the sense that he talked all the time, but not very loud. Uh, but they were very friendly. They had a good time out there. and. Uh, it was a nice, nice round. Uh, do you, did you 
Well, do you think the turning points were to shake Jack's confidence being in the trap a couple of times? Bob, do you have any comments about that? Where was the turning point, would you say, in the match? Because you fellows followed it all the way around, had a better view than anybody else. I think Phil very aptly described the turning point, and uh, I wouldn't have anything to add to it, but... There he is. Here's our... Uh, come on. Uh... But the only thing I want to say... See, I told you, I didn't say me, a word, and he's already talking. Let me Go take ahead. care of this. The only thing I want to say is, is I'd like to say hello to Tony Baloney, which is two years old, my little boy, and I'd like to say hi to my wife, because whenever I'm in contention and it looks like I'm going to win, they have a, they have a scotch party over at my house. And what so do you I mean? Know, the way this is Monday, that's all right, I guess. Yeah, that's all right, but I can just see right now, they're out. <laughs> they're absolutely out. Woo. Lee, what, how would, uh, what would you describe? A, uh, you putted very well today at coming in the incoming nine. Well, I, I was a little shaky when I started out. As you know, I bogeyed the first hole. I missed about a two-footer there. Jack was very nice to me. Left it in the bunker on two to make six. He left it in the bunker in three to make double bogey five. And I said, if, 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 uh, if the first one that starts making mistakes, then I'm going to start, uh, the, I think the next one is going to start playing conservative. This is what happened, and I made a couple of uh, good putts coming in, and uh, it just, it's hard to catch up. And I think the, the big turning point is if I could have made the putt on the 16th hole, I would, I would have really loved it, especially playing a man like Jack Nicklaus on 17 and 18 as long as the holes are. But I scrambled a three iron on the green, and he, he plugged it in the right bunker, and when he made four, it made my little three-footer down that hill much, much easier. You liked 16. Uh, what was it? On Saturday, you curled in what, about a... How long was that putt you put in on 16 on uh, Saturday? That was about... Uh, Two city blocks, to tell you the truth. <laughs> I don't really know. It was about 70 feet. Uh, when you get 70 feet away, uh, but you're just trying to get close, and it just so happened it went in. But uh, I don't know what to say. I love everybody. And uh, <laughs> I, well, congratulations, I Lee, winning your second U.S. title. And gentlemen, thank you very much on behalf of ABC Bob House and Phil Scrooping. Thank you very much. Now back to you, Chris. Thank you very much, Bud. And just imagine, ladies and gentlemen, in America's most important championship. 4,300 golfers with a two handicap or better try to get into it. Only 150 made it, 15 amateurs in the West Professionals, and here in an 18-hole 